Hey everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome to uh, Club Project 2020. I'm very excited. Um, my name is Mr. Mo, co-founder of Oasis, which is opening access to STEAM in informal settings. And our mission here is really to expose as many kids as possible to quality STEM learning. And, uh, and we do that in a variety of ways. And one of the ways that I, I'm pretty excited about is the Club Project uh, 2020. So this is really a series, if you will, that lasts an entire year where we actually choose a project. And I'll go over it a little bit more, I have a presentation. Um, so back to what I was saying. So we're actually gonna have a little presentation here that I'll go through. Well, I'll tell you a little bit about Club Project 2020 and what it is. But the idea is that every year we'll have a different community-based project that we'll do and we'll work on together um, so that at the end of the year or close to it, we'll have a completed at least prototype uh, that you can actually create or have in your hand. And the goal is that you work on this as a family together, wherever you may be. Um, and so um, so this is a great way to engage in a, a full length, uh, very uh, detailed project with your children or your um, whoever that may be your child. And, um, and again, this way they can learn some valuable skills that'll come in handy in the future. So let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, presentation I have and we'll step through it. And if you have any questions after the fact, then we'll, we'll get to those as well. Okay, so again, welcome to Club Project 2020. This is session number one. So we'll have different sessions throughout the year. Um, originally, we were scheduled to do one session a month. Um, I may do more than that, just depending on the need within the community. Um, so to make sure that everybody gets uh, the help that they need to complete it, right? So, um, so what is Club Project 2020? Okay, so what is it? Why are we here? So number one, it's a community-driven, STEM-focused design and development project, okay? So um, I'm Mr. Mo, that's me, if you didn't know. I'm actually gonna pick this project, okay? But the project is open-ended, meaning that I'm just gonna really set a goal for the project in terms of what I envision it to be. And then throughout the year in each session, we're gonna work on it together uh, through the sessions, but then also on our website, if you're not a member, social.oasismatters.com, and I'll leave that information here shortly. Uh, you can sign up there and become a member on our site. You can join the class that we have there. And that's where we'll post deeper uh, deeper diving uh, information as well as any handouts and presentations that we go over so you can have access to that, okay? But in the end, everybody should have their own self-built or family-built project, okay? And that's the cool part about it. Um, so throughout the year, we're gonna go through and spec out or uh, really design and choose parts that we're gonna use. And so, and a lot of that, what drives that decision is cost, okay? So we wanna make sure that um, the cost is, uh, is affordable for everyone, okay? So one second here. So how will it benefit you and your family? A couple ways, actually. So. So you will learn the engineering design process, which is really a process that's used, a step-by-step -step process to guide you through uh, what we can do and what we can develop, okay? So you will develop your imagination and creativity because this is a year-long project and it's gonna force you to think and to be creative in ways that maybe you haven't been in the past, okay? Um, so you will learn to work together as a group, family, team to accomplish a goal, okay? And then we'll be working together virtually in these sessions and then online as well in the class, okay? Um, and then ultimately you'll learn some hard skills, okay? So like programming, prototyping, electronics, assembly and robotics, okay? And so that last word, robotics, should give you an idea of what we're gonna actually, the project that we're actually gonna work on, okay? So what is our club project 2020? And there you go, you can kind of see it for yourself. Um, it's not going to be exactly what you see, but it's going to be what we call a DIY or do-it-yourself version of this Sphero robot, okay? So we say do-it-yourself because we're actually going to design and choose and pick parts from scratch so that we can essentially have something similar to what you see on the right there, right? So 
right here. So if you've seen BB-8, this is the type of robot that we're going to design and build, okay, from scratch. And so um, I know it may seem daunting or, or very difficult, but we're going to work together and we're going to figure it out. And so here, if you see here, this is what they call an exploded view or a disassembled view of a Sphero robot. And I'm going to show you, I have a, a Sphero mini here and I'll show you kind of what that looks like. But here are the parts and pieces uh, that give you an idea of kind of how it works. All right. And here's the shell, which is on the outside. All these parts and pieces fit inside this circular spherical shell. OK, so it's a robot. So that's what we're going to build. We're going to build throughout this year our own what I call DIY Sphero robot. OK, or maybe we can call it the ball bot. And maybe we'll we'll come up with some names on what we want to call it because we want to give it its own identity. All right. Um, so what is a robot? OK, we're talking about that. We're going to build a robot. But what is a robot? Now, when I talk to kids, typically they if I show them a robot, they can say, hey, yeah, that's a robot. But when it comes time to when I say, hey, explain to me what a robot is, they can give me some some ideas, but nobody for the most part, explains it explicitly and could say like, hey, this is exactly what a robot is. And that's fine because um, there are many definitions. But th for our purposes going forward, this is what we say a robot is. It has to have these three things. OK, so number one, it has to be a machine. And when I say it's a machine, that I mean that it's been built or put together somehow by human hands. OK, so it's not grown or it doesn't just appear. It has to be uh put together, okay, or assembled. It's a machine, okay? And then number two, it, it's a, it has to have a programmable brain, right? So we say a robot is a machine with a programmable brain. And when we're talking about a programmable brain, we mean that we can give it instructions, okay? Or we can program it using code, all right? So that's the, that's the second part of what a robot needs to be. And then finally, we say a machine um, has to be able to, a robot has to be able to move a physical body. Okay. So again, a machine, a robot is a machine with a programmable brain that can move a physical body. Okay. So it has to have all these, all three things. Okay. So I, I ask this question a lot, but so is a laptop computer or robot? Somebody go ahead in the chat. Let me know if you think a laptop computer is a robot. Tell me what you think in the chat. And then why or why not? Anybody? Maybe. <laughs> That's true. Maybe. Is it is a laptop? Give me a definitive yes or no. Is a laptop a, uh, a robot? Tamara, uh, no, that's right, that's right. Anybody else? Well, I guess we gave it away there. So no, it's not uh, a robot because it doesn't meet the third condition that we have here where we're talking about it can move a physical body, okay? So a laptop can't move itself. So let's say if we put um, some tracks on the, on the uh, like tank tracks on the bottom of the laptop and then programmed it to allow it to move itself, then it would become a robot at that point, okay? So. <clears throat> so um, so we have, again, just to reiterate or go over again, a robot is a machine with a programmable brain that can move a physical body. OK, and so that's what we're going to work on for our club project 2020, the DIY Sphero. Or if you have the BBA in mind, that's that's what we're going to do. OK, so how are we going to do this now? It's a big task. Right. So what is going to be our guide as we go through this? Right. So our guide is actually going to be the engineering design process. All right. Uh, yep. There's going to be a room. Well, we'll get to that. Yeah. yeah uh, asking uh, some questions there. Somebody asked if there was going to be a remote control. We'll get to that. Okay. In the specs or the requirements. Okay. So if you see here, all right, this is our, this is the process here on the left. Okay. And if you see the image here, it starts here with the ask, and then you can see it kind of goes in a circle circle here or a cycle, right? So we start with the ask, we go to imagine, plan, create, and improve, okay? So this is how we're gonna step through actually designing and building our DIY Sphero, okay? Um, so ask, what do these mean? What do these steps mean? Uh, first, ask means that what are the requirements? What does our product need to accomplish? Are there any special needs in terms of uh, 
what it can do or what it should look like, where it should fit. All of these are the requirements part, okay? And then we move to step two, which is imagine. This is when we start to do brainstorming or where we start to think about and throw out different ideas that can maybe possibly make it happen, right? And this is really the fun part because uh, the sky's the limit when we're talking about brainstorming and imagining, right? So we can come up with really anything at that point, right? But you know, ultimately we're gonna have to choose something that we're able to actually execute on and do, okay? Um, and so uh, I think the imagine piece is very important, but it's also, uh, in my opinion, the most fun stage of this whole process. And then after we move from imagine, we go to plan. So plan is where we actually start to put pen to paper. We actually start to create blueprints, drawings. We start to get specific on what sizes we need, what parts and pieces, um, how big should things be, um, overall design and uh, materials such as that. So this is the draw and design. So this becomes a little bit harder now because um, if you're not familiar with how these parts and pieces work together, then you really need to do some research, okay? But that's what I'm, what I'm here for to help you with this part. And I don't know everything, so we're gonna kind of go through this together, all right? Now I have a, a, an idea of where we wanna go and how we should get there, but I don't have all of the answers uh, laid out yet. And that's, and that's the cool part, because that's where we're gonna go through that together. And then we go to the create part. This is now where we go from the drawings to actually putting parts and pieces together, okay? buying them, starting to put them together and creating what we call our first version or our prototype, okay? And uh, and so this is the steps we're going. Remember, uh, if we're looking over here on the left, this is a cycle and we step through each and then we get to the create. And then finally, we come to the improve part, okay? This is where you repeat. So you make your product better by going through this entire process again, okay? So the improve piece is really where now, once we actually start to put pieces and parts together, we may find that it doesn't actually work how we imagined it would work. Or maybe some of the wheels don't fit or the motor's not big enough or we don't have a big enough power supply. All those things will come into play, okay? But a lot of times you don't really realize that or know that until you get to the create piece, all right? And so after that, that's when you say, hey, when you go to the improve section where we say, hey, we need more batteries because we don't have enough power for this or, um, you know, this this part is too big. It won't fit. It won't assemble properly. So this is the improved piece. OK, so this is going to be our guide, the engineering design process. OK, so get to know this image and I'll put this on the website in the Club Project 2020 class uh, and get to know kind of these uh, requirements and what each step means. OK, because this is going to be our friend as we move through this project. OK. So we're going to actually start on the first step of the engineering design process, which is the ask piece. OK, the requirements. What what are we looking for? And this is really where me, Mr. Mo, I'm laying out uh, the starting point for what we want to do. And some of this can change, but this is really where we're going to move from uh, forward from this point. OK, so what do we have to do? So number one, here are the requirements. We're going to design and build a robot that is similar to a Sphero, okay? So remember I showed you the Sphero in the earlier slide, which is really the ball robot or what you, uh, the BB-8 robot, okay? Now we may not have a head on ours, but uh, it still works the same, okay? So that means uh, we need to build an internally driven robotic ball. Now those words may be big, but really it means that our ball is driven by something on the inside. So typically when you see a car, those wheels are on the outside of the shell or the body, but whatever we use to actually move the robotic ball around will have to fit on the inside of something, okay, of our shell, okay? So we, and number two, we wanna use low cost parts that are easily obtainable. So, you know, we may use Amazon, Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, anywhere that may have these parts readily available, okay? Because we wanna make sure that everybody can really go to their local store or fire up Amazon if they, if they have an account and just purchase the parts at a low cost and have them at their home in a, in a matter of days, okay? So this will allow us to go through that cycle, that engineering design process cycle relatively quickly, okay? Um, and so if we buy parts that maybe don't work, that's where the low cost part work comes into play. We wanna make sure that, okay, this part doesn't work, but it didn't cost us an arm and a leg uh, to actually buy, okay? 
Um, so, and then third, we want to make it both autonomous. Now, when I say autonomous, that means it can move around by itself. So we'll have to program it to do that. So this is where the programming piece comes in. And then we also, uh, Mona had asked, we're going to make it a remote control capable, meaning that we'll, we'll equip it so that if you just want to drive it around, as opposed to just letting it roam around, um, that um, you know you have that capability, okay? And um, that may mean that we have to create two different programs and um, you know upload them separately to have them in that mode. We'll figure that out, okay? So that just means again that we'll have to we can program it to drive by itself, or that we'll be able to uh, be driven with a remote controller, okay? So this is the ask. So this is really like our structure. This is going to be our guiding light right here, where we say, "Hey, this is what's going to drive us to actually uh, help us develop this robot." Okay. And so the next step, which we're not actually going to do today, but it's really like if you imagine, or if you say like your homework. Okay. So this is what I want you to think about before our next session. And also, if you want to interact on the website in the class, we can kind of go through some of that there publicly so people can kind of see it and contribute their ideas and thoughts. But this is the second step of the engineering design process. So we just went through the ask part today, right? Where we're talking about what do we need to do? How, you know, what is our goal? And then the second step is the imagine piece. Okay. So here's some things though that I want you to think about with the imagine piece. Okay. So um, a machine. So we, if you look at how I break it out here, these one, two, and three, these are the parts that we say um, a robot is. So we're building a robot, right? So we have a machine with a programmable brain that can move a physical body. And so that'll allow us to then like underneath those, think about like, if it's a machine, does it use motors? Do we need sensors, right? These are some of the things that we have to think about. And if so, what do they look like? Well, you know, what exactly, what type of motors do we choose? And again, we'll work all through all of this through the entire year. So don't get anxious about it. If you don't know what a sensor is or what motors are, this will give us an opportunity to learn about those things. So, and that's what my hope is, is that, you know, as we step through this, uh, things that you don't know about, this will give you an opportunity to learn about those things. Okay. Uh, so a programmable brain. So here's something I want you to look up if you can, when you get an opportunity. Look for microcontrollers. So you may want to pull up Google and type in microcontrollers, low cost microcontrollers. And then you can learn a little bit more about what some types of microcontrollers are. And I'm actually in the class section, which I'll, I'll set up for tomorrow. So you'll be able to join um, if you haven't already. Um, I'm going to put in there uh, several videos that you can view that'll give you some more background information on Sphero how it actually is built. So we can take, learn some lessons from that. Um, and then you can also learn about the different microcontrollers that are out there. So this is really like the brain of our robot. Okay. The microcontroller. So this is very important, probably one of the more important pieces or selections that we need. Okay. Um, so, and then we need to think about how can we program it? So our selection of microcontroller is really going to depend on how easy it is to program it. Like, are there resources out there that we can readily uh, obtain that we can get to so that we can use it to program? And do we want to make a simple or a complex program or, or um, you know, in terms of how what it's able to do? Do we want that to be very simple or more complex to give us more options? OK. And then finally, a physical body. Should it be metal? Should it be made out of plastic? What's the material? How big should it be? Should it be heavy? Uh, these are all things to consider. Okay. So again, these slides will be online. So don't worry if you don't remember all of this, it'll be there. And then I want you, once you're able to view it, and if you have any questions, definitely reach out to me on the website so that we can, uh, we can have that discussion there. And so everybody can benefit from that discussion. Okay. And so to dive deeper part. So what do you have to do going forward uh, from today? Okay. Number one, and this is probably important if you're going to keep track of this, is that uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, enroll into the Club Project 2020 class on Club Oasis. Um, if you don't remember, if so, I know some people are registered here for the Crowdcast, but aren't necessarily registered on Club Oasis. Club Oasis is the free online STEM club, and that's at social. Um, 
Oasis Matters, and I'll put it in the chat here. Social.oasis Matters. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Social.oasismatters.com. Uh, okay. And you don't have to put www in front of that. Okay. So that's number one. Enroll into that class, which it should be up tomorrow. Uh, view the videos in the background info section. Okay. So we're going to have some videos in there. Um, that'll give you more information on Sphero, okay? Since we're designing our do-it-yourself do Sphero, we want to know how Sphero actually works. And there's some cool videos in there because you can kind of see how BB-8 works as well from Star Wars. Uh, all of that stuff is pretty cool when you see how complex it can get. Um, but we're going to actually uh, uh, work on actually building our own. So that's a uh, that's what's very important for us. So, and then I want you to begin your research for the imagine step of the engineering design process. Okay. So once you kind of go through the background info, you think about like, Hey, how should this look? How can we put these things together? Um, then I want you to start to do some research and start, you know, tracking or keeping a log of, of those things, or just commenting on the website where we can keep that as a log as well. Okay. Cause you can post in the class, any information that you find that may be helpful for everyone, okay? And then finally, compile ideas for our next session, which we'll, uh, we'll be announcing for us. Uh, and again, it may, I still haven't figured out uh, exactly how we're gonna run it, but the next se session may just be more of an informal session where we kind of pick a time to, to come on and then um, we kind of throw around and have a brainstorming session, okay? And then the session after that will be the more formal uh, session where we have a presentation. Okay. So that's that. Um, uh, any questions? Anybody want to come up and ask any questions? Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Brooke. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited because as an engineer, these types of projects are actually uh, how engineers go through their day or, or through their career. Um, open-ended projects where you have essentially an assignment that you have to figure out um, and, and go through the research. You have to, you know, do brainstorming. And this process is actually beneficial regardless of what career field you decide to go into because it keeps you disciplined um, and it really turns you into a problem solver, okay? Um, so uh, any questions? Uh, let me see if there... Uh, somebody was having... That was earlier, okay. Uh, any questions for me? Okay. How long will the project take? Um, well, our goal, I won't say our goal, but our, our, our bookends on the project are a year. So we say it's project 2020. Um, it may not actually take a year, but we're giving ourselves a year to work through all of it. So each year we'll have a different project. Now, if we get through this relatively quickly, we may kick off another one. Um, but the goal is that, um, you know, you learn the skills to actually build and design your own robot. Um, but we're giving ourselves an entire year to go through the entire process of uh, selecting materials, learning about programming, um, selecting microcontrollers, all of that stuff. And, you know, because we're meeting uh, so infrequently once or twice a month, um, a lot of the work will be done in that interim period. Um, but actually, um, you know, that'll help us to pace it out. You know, we know a lot of people are busy. Okay, let's see. Zora wanted to come up. Uh, let me see. Say hi. Hello, I can hear you. Okay, ask your question. Hi, can you hear us? Yep. Ask your question. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Hello? <laughs> hey, I, um... I think metal uh, um the robot is made out of metal because it won't break. Okay, good, good. That's a good idea. Um, yeah. So if we make it out of metal, it won't break, right? But it may be heavy, and it may cost a little bit more, right? So we'll have to think about that. But that's a good suggestion. Thank you for that. Was that Mona? Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Let me see, somebody, uh, yes, we'll make this uh, a presentation available on the website. Uh, and if you join the website, 
uh, there. It'll be in that in the class there, so it'll be available. So that was from our camera. <laughs> Uh, also wants to know if we need a team name to, to <laughs> no, you don't need a team name. Um, but you know, I think, uh, and, and you can make up your own name if you want to, it's actually, we're going to be working on it together across the nation, different families. Um, but I do think we need to come up with a name for our robot though, you know, once we're designing it, cause I think it'll be cool to have a name for the I robot. Like I like okay. So, oh, and I almost forgot. So what is, uh. How does the Sphero robot work? If you've never seen it work, I've got a Sphero mini robot here. Um, yeah, you see, I got Erica telling me uh, what I need to do. So, <laughs> in the chat. Uh, so let me pull up the the app here. So it's an app controlled robot, okay? And I'll take and I'll open this one up so you can kind of see. No, I want I I I want to see. Oh, hold on. You can uh, close out, Zora. Erica, I can hear you, so you can close that out. I'm, hold on. Uh, there we go. Okay, so if you can see here, I can move this a robotic ball. All controlled from my smartphone here. And this thing moves pretty quickly, so I'm moving it very slow here so it doesn't fall off the table. So this is what we're going to be building this year. Uh, probably be a bigger version than this because the electronics will be a lot bigger that will have to go into this. Um, but you get an idea of how it works, okay? And I'm just controlling this from my phone. It's like a little joystick here. Okay, so what does it look like on the inside? How does it work? Okay, so I'll just, this all kind of, this one kind of opens up like an egg. Okay, so maybe this gives you some ideas. And so here it is right here. Okay, it's just like a little ball. I don't know if, it, if you could see that, but then there are little wheels here on the side. Okay, um, and our design is got probably going to mimic this. And so, and there's a weight here. Why do you think there's a weight on the bottom of this? Any ideas? Who wants to venture a guess? Why do you think they put the wheel on? No, so, so maybe this will give you an idea. So I'm setting it on the side here, but for some reason it always goes that way. Why, why do you think? So it can roll potentially, but then we want it to be uh, right side up. So. This weight kind of makes sure that that part of the robot is always facing down. That way these wheels, because these wheels actually fit in here. And then when the wheels turn, they make it, they make the ball turn, okay? Like around, okay? So if you ever seen a hamster in a ball, that's essentially what this is. It's a robot in a ball that moves around like a hamster would, okay? Or if you've ever seen um, adults who are rolling around in those big clear balls, plastic, almost like balloons where they're rolling in the field, uh, the same thing. And maybe I'll put some videos or pictures of that so that you can kind of see that uh, at play. But those are the things we want to think about when we are thinking about how will our robot ball actually work, okay? Um, so um, any questions? Any more questions? Um, again, thank you for joining us. Remember, I'll, I'll set tomorrow, I'll have the class on our website. Uh, social.oasismatters.com. You can join the website and then join the class and everything you saw tonight as far as presentation, any of the background information will be available there. And we'll start down this path of designing our own spheroid robot from scratch. So it should be pretty exciting. Um, I'm, I'm glad that you're along for the journey. So no, no other questions. I'll sign off and I'll see you in the next session. Hey.